What's up everyone, Lakonde Mwili here, back with another video, and we're talking K8s. In this video, I wanna talk about how you can increase the availability of your application and its resource utilization using topology spread constraints. You may already know that it's a best practice to have multiple instances or replicas for your workloads. And the reason for this is so that you can improve the fault tolerance in the case that something were to happen to an instance of your application or if the infrastructure it's running on had some kind of failure. Having multiple instances allows the other replicas to take on the load or work of the application so that things remain operational. But it's not enough to just have multiple replicas of your application. You need to spread it out beyond a single failure domain. And the spread can be based on different topology domains like nodes, availability zones, or regions. But before we go any further, let's talk about a very similar concept, pod affinity rules. And I've covered pod affinity rules in a separate video, Put a link to that in the description below in case you want to watch it. And pod affinity rules allow you to spread your workloads across failure domains by defining anti-affinity constraints. Pod anti-affinity is a constraint that tells the Kubernetes scheduler to schedule certain pods away from each other based on a certain topology like a host or a zone. And it's one way of preventing replicas of the same application from running in the same failure domain. It works but a big challenge it presents is that you have no guarantee of an even spread or distribution of your replicas. Affinity rules can either be applied with a preferred mode or a strict mode. If you go with the preferred mode, the rule isn't applied strictly by the scheduler, and so you'll likely have multiple replicas running in different topology domains, but without a desirable even spread. If you go with a strict mode, you're looking at potentially having a single replica in each topology domain. And that kind of takes us back to the problem of fault tolerance and the need for multiple instances of an application. However, topology spread constraints allows you to have multiple instances of an app in different topology domains and also gives you more control over the spread or distribution that the scheduler should try to apply. And this increases the likelihood of better resource utilization and high availability of your application. When working with topology spread constraints, there are a couple of fields that you should be aware of. First, I'll talk about the max skew field. And this is the property used to control the degree of imbalance in the spread or the maximum point to which things can be uneven. Let's say we had an application with 10 replicas in a cluster spread across three zones. We can't evenly spread 10 replicas across the three zones, but how uneven do we want things to get? And this is answered by the value we put in the max skew and it informs the scheduler when it's placing pods on the nodes. The scheduler considers this value in relation to matching pods that have already been scheduled to the nodes. In this example, the max skew value can be between one and 10, and that defines the allowable difference as I've explained. A value of one means we can have a spread like 334 or 433 or 343 across the different zones. If we had a max skew of 10, then we could potentially see a result of 10, 0, 0 in terms of how the pods are distributed across nodes in the different zones. Next, there is the topology key. And now remember, labels are key value pairs. And so the topology key is the key for one of the node labels. And it's important because this key will represent the type of topology domain, and it's paired with the specific value for that topology key. For example, a topology key could be a zone, and the value could be AF South 1A, which is an availability zone for an AWS region in South Africa. When unsatisfiable is another field and it's kind of self-explanatory. How do you want the scheduler to respond if the desired constraints can't be satisfied? Should it go ahead and schedule the pod while prioritizing the nodes that minimize the skew that you defined, or should the pod not be scheduled altogether? These are the two options. And the last one I'll cover is the label selector. And the label selector is used to find any matching pods so that the scheduler can actually be aware of them when deciding where to place pods according to the constraints that you defined. Now, there are other fields, but they're not generally available at this point. However, I've put a link to the documentation so that you can read about them and possibly make use of them if you have a fitting use case. That's enough talk. Let's take a look at this in action. All right, now I'm gonna demonstrate the usage of the topology spread constraint. But before I do that, I wanna mention a few things that you should consider if you're going to repeat or follow this particular exercise. Obviously, you'll need a Kubernetes cluster, and if you wanna spread your app across different zones, then you need to make sure that your cluster spans those different AZs. I'm going to deploy an application that should be highly available with a relatively even spread across three different AZs in Europe. Hence me using the region EU West 1, which is 
Ireland, which is specifically in Ireland for an AWS region. Uh, at the moment, I only have two nodes, but each one is in a separate AZ, EU West 1A and EU West 1C. Now, because I want to run separate nodes specifically for this workload that I'll be deploying, I'm going to use Carpenter as my cluster autoscaler. And when I deploy my application with the scheduling constraints, Carpenter will use this information in order to add compute capacity to my cluster and will allow the scheduler to try and fulfill my scheduling requirements. So Carpenter will likely create three nodes, one in each AZ. So that would be EU West 1A, EU West 1B, and EU West 1C. And that will be so that my app can then be spread across these different topology domains. And you don't need Carpenter for topology spread constraints, just, just to be clear. I'm just using it so I can get specific nodes that match my workload requirements. For this exercise, I would say you should have at least two nodes to see how the scheduler responds to your constraints. And you don't have to go with a zonal spread. You can go with a host topology domain and decide what you want the scheduler to do in case your workload constraints can't be satisfied. In this section, I wanna go over some details in my manifest file. As you can see here, this deployment will create 10 replicas. And if you take a look at the topology spread constraints down here, you'll see I have a max skew of one, which means we should have a distribution whereby two nodes in separate AZs each have three pods, and the third node in a separate AZ should have four. So basically the spread would be three, three, four. Uh, you can see the topology key for the topology domain is based on zones as I've been speaking about. In the case that these constraints can't be satisfied, I still want the pods to be scheduled anyway, as you can see here. And lastly, we have the label selector, which matches the key value pair for this particular workload, ex app express test, as you can see over here as well for the pod, the template for the pods so that the scheduler can match these pods and act accordingly when deciding where to place the other replicas. All right, now I'm going to go ahead and deploy this manifest. As you can see, there are three nodes that are coming up. All right, so all three nodes are ready, as you can see. And if I head over to take a look at the pods, all of my pods have now been scheduled for this particular deployment. Now, in case you're wondering which nodes are the new ones, you can just take a look at the age on the far right side. You can see the ones that have been alive for a couple of seconds. And now let's take a look at the regions that they've actually been created in. So you can see this one's been created in EU West 1A. That's the failure domain it's been created in. And this one's been created in EU West 1B. And lastly, we've got another node that's been created in EU West 1C. So Carpenter was respecting those particular scheduling constraints, which is good. The next thing we want to see is how the pods have actually been distributed based on our topology spread constraints. All right, so we can see here that the first node that I just um, used, this is the one running in EU West 1A, has one, two, three, four uh, replicas running on it. And this node in EU West 1B has three replicas running in it. So we're going to take a look at the third one, and I'm expecting it to have three replicas, which will show that our topology spread constraints worked out well with an even distribution. And there you have it, three pods running on this. Thanks a lot for watching. I hope you found that useful. If so, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and stay tuned for more.